Hey, I'm Kiro and welcome to my workshop. Halloween is around the corner, so that means that it's time again for our annual mega collaboration. And this year you'll have 12 videos for your entertainment. The hardest part of the traditional Halloween collaboration is picking the right character. We've made a vampire, a witch, the representation of hell, this guy, and a ghost. And I think it's time for a demon to join our happy family. I was first inspired by this image I found, but once I was creating him, the toll took a more hellish vibe. So grab your treats and let's begin. I choose Monsieur Garot du Roc for this year and added the armature of the horns of camera. I fill his head with a lot of aluminum foil and hot glue to prepare it for the epoxy clay. And I'll begin adding clay to create a new profile and then make the horns. I'm adding some water to soften the clay and to make the sanding process a little bit easier. But the clay was super dry and I was having a lot of time molding the horns. So I removed it, added some water and apply it again off camera. Once I got the right texture, I'll continue. I'm covering all the hair plugs with a thin layer of clay to make his head very smooth. And water. Water is essential for the clay to just lie through the surface. And to make this process less tedious, I'll finish the horns off camera. It looks very rough, I know, but trust the process. And I also fill the hole where the wings of Garrett go. I want my demon to have very angular features, so I'm adding more clay to make him some nice pecs. And once they're done, I'll give him some pointy shoulders to add to this demonic vibe. And doing this, I'm being very careful to avoid touching the shoulders articulation. With this mod, the arm's movement is kinda limited, but not that much. And then the right arm. With a small snake of clay, I'm popping out his ribcage. And as well as the head, shoulders and chest, I'm making it very prominent. And after a lot of sanding, we end up with this mess. All we have left is to cover up the mods with my nemesis, color matching. I spent like 2 hours mixing and mixing paints until I end up with a decent but not perfect color match. Oh, that satisfying footage of when the clay just disappears and blends with the plastic. 3 layers of paint and everything is well covered. And the paint looks fine until you realize that Garat is supposed to be a stone gargoyle. So to blend the painted mods better, I'm using a toothbrush to splash some watered down paint all over the body to mimic the stone texture. Of course, the original plastic has a blend of colors, so I'm adding some light, medium and dark grey dots here and there. After that, I'm using black paint to make a gradient up to the eyes. But the difference between the black and the grey is too harsh, so to blend it, I'm using a makeup sponge and add black paint on one half and grey to the other and blend both colors using a dabbing motion all over the color separation. The body is almost ready, but I need to pop out all those mods better by contouring everything. This will also help me to make the color difference from the plastic less obvious. I'm adding grey pastel as a transition and black for the deeper parts and to play with the dimensions. And for the angles to be more evident, I'm adding white pastel. Of course, we can forget about those pecs. And as usual, accentuate the neck and the clavicles. I love shading the clavicles. Once the body is ready, it's time for the face up. And I want to keep it kind of minimalistic. First things first. I'm shading the parts of the face I couldn't reach with my sponge with some black pastel. On the nose, those prominent cheekbones, and the jawline. I drew the eyes off camera, and first I'm drawing inside the scleras and irises with white as a base for the future color. Then darken the lash line with black. Add a new layer of MSC and fill the scleras with red color pencil. And the iris is yellow. 
and then at the pupils. And draw some lines on the irises to add some texture. Then apply black on the upper lash line to close the eye a little bit. And finally the catch lights. To add something to the horns, first I'm applying full card dragonfly glaze with a sponge and blend it down to the middle. After that I'm adding some splatters of UV resin to the horns. Cure them with my UV lamp and add gold leaf. To really smudge the leaf on the sticky resin I'm using an eyeshadow applicator and I'm going to do this on the rest of the horns. For his weapon I'm also applying resin on a plastic stirrer and add gold leaf. Then paint the bamboo skewer I glued to the stirrer with gunmetal paint. Now time for the outfit. I cut some pieces of fake suede for a skirt and distressed them. Later added a piece of ribbon around his hips and some elastic on the crotch to avoid the skirt from pulling up. And I'm sewing the suede pieces on the ribbon. Once done, I'll glue on some thick leather panels to close the skirt from the front and to play with the textures. Very nice! I also added a belt on top of the panels. And I'm gluing in the center of the skirt this golden skull I painted and this fake snake skin piece. And as a final detail, let's give him a mask. I'm using this invisibility head to do it. Off camera, I made some cracks with my Dremel. And now I'm going to paint it with white acrylic. I'll add two more layers and spray the face with MSC. Once done, I'm using black pastel to shade the face. I want this mask to be very dramatic, so I'm not pulling back from adding a lot of shadows. And now with black pencil, I'm filling the eyes. and then fill the cracks I previously made. I wanted the cracks to have dimension, other than just being painted on. And add black pastel on the lips. Later add shadow to the cracks with pastel, and contour the temples and the cheeks. Playing around with light and shadows is very important to compensate the lack of dimensions on the plastic. Once the paint is done, I'll cut the face out of the head with my X-Acto knife, but trying to avoid squishing the head too much. And to make it shine like real porcelain, I'm brushing on some UV resin and cure it on my lamp. And there it is! I just have to clean the stickiness with some isopropyl alcohol and my demon is done! Meet Phobos. In Greek mythology, Phobos was the god and personification of fear and panic, so I believe that name suits my demon perfectly. I've always struggled with doing body modifications, and although my horns were not as polished as I want them to be, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. So let me know what do you think about my demonic prints on the comments. But wait! Remember this is a massive collaboration, so don't forget to watch the videos of Dolumentary, Electric Bunny, Ancient Tyrium, Feral Dolls, H. Ali Crafts, his name is Akin, I Could Do That DIY, Moonlight Jewel, Mr. Super Customs, The Dolly Geek, and Valkyrie's World. Everyone did such an amazing job, and it's always a blast to work alongside very talented artists. And well, that's a wrap for today. As always, don't forget to like this video and join the workshop by subscribing to my channel. Click the bell to get notified about new videos and follow me on Instagram at kiros underscore workshop. 
Happy Halloween! Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next time. Kira out!